Hey guys, it's the Aussie Gamer here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing my settings for the Logitech G920 wheel on Forza Horizon 4. So, let's get into it. Now, I want to give a quick apology because I'm a little sick right now, so I'm not as energetic as I usually am, so if I'm a little quieter, that's the reason. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd highly recommend you do to keep up to date with Forza Horizon 4 content. Yeah, if you have subbed, you are awesome, and if you haven't, that would be a massive help. So now, starting off with the settings on this G920, I want to focus in on the Logitech G Hub software first off, and then I'll move into Forza Horizon 4. So right here is the G Hub software, and you can see this selected preset is for the steering wheel. Now, for the operating range, I've actually put it around 650 degrees, which I think is better than, let's say, 900, which is way too wide for, I think. And also, it's not 540, so it's a good middle ground. I'm also sure that I have left the center spring strength stock at 20 and the sensitivity stock at 50. I haven't changed them because I feel like they are good the way they are. Now, moving on to the pedals, I've actually glanced over this issue with the board itself in a past video where I looked at the G920, and that is the brake pressure. It's just way too stiff compared to the other pedals. So what I'd recommend doing is turning up the sensitivity to 100 on this selected menu. So with that put up to the max, it means that it doesn't actually take too much effort to be able to hit the brakes and stop the car. So it's a good thing to do if you haven't already. Now sadly, I'm pretty sure if you're on Xbox, you can't do this, but I will be showcasing other settings inside the game that actually make the brakes just that bit better. Right, so we are in Forza Horizon 4 now, and I am going to be showcasing my settings. Now, this may not be for everyone. Everyone may have different preferences, because I've found that out myself. So, some YouTubers may say in their videos of how to set it up, like, this is perfect for everyone. And I find out it's not. It's not for me, so I change it myself, and that's what you're probably going to do. But this is a good baseline. So, we are now going into the controller settings, and going to the right where there is the wheel. All we need to do is press the advanced button and we can check out all the different settings we can do for this wheel to make it feel better. Now for you guys who actually put the wheel in and don't set it up like this, you will find that it is quite hard to control. So what I'm going to be showcasing here is going to make it much easier. So let's start off with what I have done. So first off, vibration is on, mouse free look, that can be whatever you want on or off, invert force feedback, Make sure to leave that off. And now to these settings, so steering axis dead zone inside, zero. Steering axis dead zone outside, I will be putting that at 100. So for the steering linearity, it's best to leave it at 50. I have it at 45 and I'm actually going to change it right now to that because that is a better setting to be at. The next ones are the acceleration axis dead zone inside. This will be at zero. The acceleration axis dead zone outside should be at 100. So this means that every single percentage of your throttle will be felt through the car. So if it's lower, you'll feel less. Now for deceleration, this is for braking. It's best to have this dead zone inside at 0 and the dead zone outside at 100. So basically do this if you want your brakes to feel really sharp. Because I know this pedal is quite rigid, it's probably best to leave it high. For the clutch axis dead zone inside, I leave it at 15 because you may rest your foot on it, but uh, yeah, your personal preference here. Next one is the clutch axis dead zone outside. You can put this at 100 and it to be really, really sharp, but I leave it lower. Next one is the e-brake axis dead zone inside. I leave this at zero for the reasons of it being sharp. Next one is the e-brake axis dead zone outside. Put this at 100 so your e-brake is nice and sharp. Next one, which could be completely personal preference, it doesn't really change the way the car drives, it's just for the wheel itself, and that is the vibration scale. So I put it at 100 so the wheel itself vibrates, but if you don't want that, you can turn it down. Now this one is very finicky for different people. Some people say 100, some people say 80, some people say 50, and 50 itself is not too bad, but I actually put it down a little lower at 14 to 15 because I feel like it's too rough. So if you are a strong person, put it up a little higher than this because you will feel like this is a bit too light, but for me who is kind of weak, 
putting it down lower is a nicer experience. Now we have got the center spring value. So I usually leave this around 80, it can go much higher, but around this percentage, is a nice experience. Now this is the wheel damper scale. I have mine around 96, it could be 100, it doesn't really matter. It's only a tiny few percentages that I've put it at. And yeah, if you put the larger number in, it will be more stiff. So if you want your car to feel like it has absolutely no power steering, put this up. And if you want it to feel nice and light and smooth, put it down. All right, the next one is the force feedback understeer. I personally have put this at 100 because I don't like understeer. It just makes it hard to drive, but uh, keep it high if you want a nice experience. Next one is the force feedback minimum force. This I would put at 100 as well. Personal preference, you can look into this yourself and play around with it, but this is mine. And the last one on here is the steering sensitivity. I've put this around 90 because 100 can be a little too sharp if you find that. I personally do, but putting it down makes it really, really uh, floaty as well. You may not like that, so that's why I keep it up at 90. So there you go, those are my settings for the Logitech wheel. Now, as I said, you may change it for yourself to be a little more stiff, to have a bit more weight in it, because everyone has a different feeling they want to be able to have when they're driving with this wheel. So what I think I'm going to do now is actually change the camera right here and move it back so you can see me using the wheel and I'm going to go for a quick cruise. So here we are, we have the wheel set up again and we are going to be taking this FPV GTF for a drive. So I was kind of really strapped for choice when it came to a high horsepower vehicle with a manual transmission. So yeah, I could have had flappy paddles in the vehicle but I kind of felt like it would have been a bit cheesy so I chose this. Now I'm pretty sure this one is around 800 horsepower or higher, so it is pretty quick and yeah, we'll be going pretty soon. Alright, time to hopefully not stall it. There we go, that was not very smooth, but uh, we'll get onto it. Now this thing is a lot faster than that Cobra I drove in the review of this wheel. So uh, I'm probably going to crash, hopefully I won't, but it's a bit more sketchy. So what I'm going to do is shut up for the moment and drive this thing properly.
Alrighty, so I've taken this thing for a nice little hoon around the Scottish and British countryside. What I think I'm going to do now is try and do some skids, and I mean drifting. I'm probably not going to do too well, but this tune is more towards cruising. You can very easily change it towards drifting, but this is my preference. Now obviously more experienced people with wheels will be able to do better than I am, even with my own tunes. So yeah, if you know what you're doing, you're probably going to succeed very well with this. But if you are inexperienced, it's also a good level to start at. Alrighty guys, well I'm going to end it here, thank you for watching, if you like this video then make sure to subscribe because it really does help me out and know that you want to watch more from my channel and see more like this. Okay, see you later, thank you for watching, and peace.